publicly as Najib was, was was brutalized to say as publicly that we remember and that we will not forget. Of course, there are many. There are many who would like us to forget. There are many who, who's, even if they don't want us to forget, they ask us to let go. There are many who, are, who, who say, why is it so important five years later? There are many who ask, Aise aur kitne incident hua hai Central University? As if one Najib is not one too many. To all those, there are many who wince when we use words like Islamophobia. When we use when we say Muslims are not safe, there are many who wince and who, who engage in long semantic debates. And I say, we will engage in all those long semantic debates and we will have all those discussions about these terminologies. But do not try to tell us what we know. We know what happened to Najib. It wasn't an ordinary act of violence. It wasn't a scuffle. It wasn't an act of hooliganism. It is what happens to unwanted, marginalized, untouchable people all over India. When someone starts to stand in a space and irritate the dominant people, when someone starts to uh, be uncomfortable for the oppressor, this is the kind of public spectacle that is created. This is what a lynching is. So don't try to tell us that we shouldn't call it Islamophobic. Don't try to tell us that this is not a symbol of how of systemic discrimination in Indian campuses who are trying to articulate their voices, who are trying to articulate their perspectives. This was supposed to have a chilling effect for all of those students. And it's not, it doesn't stop on 14th October. We have heard in detail how, how the Delhi police and the CBI have bungled these investigations. And when you look at the fact that our premier national investigation agency so brazenly so deliberately fails in an investigation, so deliberately bungles it up. You know, that tells you everything we need to know about the intentions of the police. Remember, we are a country where in Uttar Pradesh, extrajudicial killing has become part of state policy. We are a country where Sharji Limam can be locked up just for saying the words Chakkaja. It's, we are a country where a man was hanged just without evidence, just to satisfy the collective conscience. So here when the CBI, when the premier investigating agencies fail to complete and fail so brazenly to even do the basics of an investigation, we know it is not because this was an accidental failure. We know it is because they were told to fail. It is because they knew that this is not a failure that the collective conscience would mind. That this is a failure that in some ways, the collective conscience wants. The effect that this had, the way that this has galvanized a certain kind of solidarity, the way it has galvanized a certain, uh, a certain kind of, uh, uh, of marginalized uh, solidarity, and the way it has given us leaders like Fatima Ammi. I think that is what the state never counted on. And what they never counted on was that even after five years, even when uh, uh, the least we can do and the most we can do uh, has no difference. Even then, so many of us will come together, so many of us will continue to insist, to continue to ask, to continue to demand, where is Naji? And even though many of us now have a sinking feeling about the answer to that question, even though many of us are now very afraid of what the truth might reveal, even though the truth is the least that is owed to us. I think, and I'll conclude with this, that the, we do know where the spirit of Najib lies. We know where his belief resides. His belief that education, his belief in trying to improve himself, better himself, in having an aspiration. We know where that belief resides. It resides in every act of remembrance, every gathering of this kind, that is happening all over the country today, where people are asking the question, where is Najib? Where people are remembering his what happened to him, where people are remembering what he wanted out of life, and they are remembering all such incidents, all, uh, and trying to call out this whole uh, uh, systemic discrimination and systemic violence that was laid bare before us five years ago.